Hello guys and welcome back to Hill House Rendering. Today in this video I'm going to be showing you how to add realistic vegetation and also landscaping to your twin motion renders. Vegetation plays a huge role in making your architectural visualisations feel more natural and immersive. Whether you're designing a modern house, a residential backyard or even like an urban park, landscaping always brings your project to life. So by the end of this tutorial you guys will know how to place and customise trees, grass and plants, use the vegetation paint tool for large areas and create random natural looking environments. So let's get started. Ok let's start by adding some trees and plants to our scene. So go over to the library and go to the vegetation and landscape. Here you'll find the trees, bushes, flowers and grass. Simply just drag and drop a tree into your scene with a left click and it instantly snaps onto the ground. Now let's customise it. Select the tree and open the inspector panel. Adjust the size and age slider for your liking to make it either taller or shorter. You can also change the season by switching it from spring, summer, autumn or even winter with just one click. Let's do the same for grass. Open the ground cover in the library and drag and drop a grass material onto the ground. Adjust the density, height and variation sliders to make it look lush and natural. Now that we've manually placed some trees and grass, we'll want to fill in the large area with vegetation, right? So that's where the vegetation paint tool comes in. So if you need to cover a large area with trees, grass or even plants, placing them one by one would take forever. So instead we can use the vegetation paint tool to scatter them naturally and even save time. Here's how it works. Firstly click the paint tool in the library and select up to five different plants or trees. Twinmotion will then randomly mix them and make it more of a natural feel, rather than you just kind of scattering them about yourself. Adjust the size of the brush and simply just click and hold over the ground and Twinmotion will then generate a natural and randomised spread for you. The vegetation paint tool really speeds up your workflow and helps cover a lot of ground quickly. Now you've placed all your trees, click on a painted area to edit the density. You can now make it thicker or sparser and change any one of your trees for variation. If you are in need to then clear a path or open up a space, or even delete some vegetation that you don't need because it's off screen, you can use the delete tool to then remove unwanted trees. Another trick you can use is blending different vegetation layers, so for example you can paint your tall trees first and then add a second layer of smaller bushes underneath. You can see in the before and after, this now creates depth and variety making the scene just look more believable. Now that we've added some trees and some larger vegetation, let's focus on the ground itself. This plays a huge part in tying the whole scene together. The surface your building sits on sets the tone and atmosphere for your render. For this scene, I've chosen to use a grassy ground texture. It gives a soft, natural look and works perfectly for this environment, something peaceful and suburban like a countryside home. To do this, I simply clicked on my landscape, which was rocky grasslands, and chose the paint tool. From there, I then chose the grassy ground texture. And then make sure when you've chosen your texture to get the right scale, just so then it fits and matches the rest of your scene. Once applied, it then immediately changed the whole vibe of the scene. But instead of stopping there, we can then make it even better by using the vegetation painting tool. Not just for trees, but for the ground level details too. Let's paint in some grass and then wild plants. Open the paint tool again, and this time select a mix of wild grass, low plants and even some weeds. And then adjust the brush size and density, and start brushing over the areas near the building, around the pathways or wherever you want some more variety and realism. One quick tip here, if your scene starts getting laggy after painting a lot of grass, you can always turn down the render distance or grass display settings in the preferences panel. This is especially useful on lower end machines or laptops, it will keep everything running smoothly without affecting your final render quality. Once you've got your grass all in place, it's time to now add those final touches. These are some small details, but they really make the scene feel real. Drop in a few natural rocks from the library and scatter them loosely around trees or edges of the landscape. And maybe even add a couple of flower clusters to some colour variation, or maybe even throw in fallen leaves for that extra organic untouched look, especially in the autumn time. These small objects add so much texture and break up the repetition. They make the environment feel lived in, like something you'd actually see or walk through in real life. Now let's take a step back and see how all of this comes together in a full render. And this is my final render, it's exactly the kind of result that you guys can be achieving by combining vegetation, materials and attention to detail, even at a beginner level. With just a few tools and some layering techniques, you can just make your scenes feel really alive and not just look good. 
So we started by adding individual trees and plants, and then used the vegetation paint tool to create larger natural groupings of grass and greenery. I showed you how to adjust sizes and density, and how to apply different ground textures to shape the feel of the environment. And then we layered in some painted grass and added subtle but powerful details like rocks, leaves and flowers to bring the scene to life. All of that combined gives us a render that looks realistic, grounded and full of atmosphere, even without using super advanced tools. So if you found this helpful, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe down below and turn on the bell icon so you don't miss the next one. And if there's a part of Twin Motion you want me to dive deeper into, drop a comment. I'm reading everything and building this series to help you guys get better results faster. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.